morning, everybody. So today I give you the lecture about the locomotive process. Before I start, my pleasure to introduce the Mr. Glotton to you. So as we know, the locomotive system is consists of the three parts. Number one, that's the bone. And the number two, we have the joint. So the two bones, they get together so they can move. That's the joint. And then the last one, that we call the muscle. So the locomotor system consists of the osteoarch, osteoarch, and the muscle. So we talk about the osteoarch. So I just introduce one bone to you. So the bones we have five functions. So number one, keep just to keep the frame of the, our body. I just stand up my head and touch to the trunk. So that we call the frame. And the number two, so you keep touch of the muscle, so we can moving. So function two is the movement. And number three, anybody you must know. Can you see my brain? Of course not. Because it keeps inside of the skull. So the, my bone is protecting the brain. So this number three function is protection. And number four, anybody knows the sponge substance inside we have the bone marrow. The bone marrow produces the blood cell. So this is the function four. Then the last function. Anyone know the bone that consists of the casting. So that we call the mineral storage. So the casting is very important for our physiological process. So for example the nerve impulse, we need the casting and our the circular proceeding, signal pathway, all involved by the casting. So that we call the mineral storage. It's the five the fifth Then we general general talk about the Mr. Blot. So all asteroid just divide the chunk board and the upper limb, lower limb, and then the lower upper limb, lower limb. Then we have the so divide the three parts. The chunk bone, the upper limb, lower limb bone, and the skull. So we will clarify one by one later. Now, the general description of the one bone. So according to the bone shape, so we divide the four bones. There is the long bone, look at this picture. There are long bone, short bone, flat bone, and irregular bone. Then we talk about the structure of the bone. Finally, we will talk about the chemical material and the development of the bone. Long bone, so look at this femur bone. It looks longer, so we call it long bone. Is it right? Of course not. Because long bone, we have two extremities. Superior extremity, low extremity, and trunk. So that's what we call the long bone. And inside we have the mineral cavity. So now you know two extremity and one trunk. That we call the long bone. So for example, on the foot, although this bone is very small, but be careful, it's not short bone. 
It's the long bone because we have two, two extremities and one chunk. So that's what we call the long bone. Okay, good. Number two, we call the short bone. So short bone is a cuboid bone. So look at this picture on the foot. So this one, tarsal bone is the short bone. Here we have the seven tarsal bone. The cuboid all consists of the sponge bone is number two. So inside, four of the red bone marrow. Four of the red bone marrow. So it's the capacity to produce the blood cell. Produce the blood cell. By the way, there's also two parts that consist of the short bone. One is the paw, our hand, top of ball. And another one is the foot, the tassel ball. Okay, only two. Number three, we will talk about the flat ball. So this one is the flat ball, the scar, yes, a clinical ball. It's a flat ball. So be careful, look at this picture. So you will find we have two plates. Number one is the compact compact ball, bony substance. And inside is the sponge bony substance. So we call it outlayer plate and inner plate. So three layer substance. So forms the one plate ball. By the way, inside that we call the dot. The last one. Not look longer, not look shorter, not look flat. So this ball look at the nothing. Nothing. So we call it an irregular ball. Yes, you know. That is a vertebral, vertebral ball. Platform. If we observe the very carefully, we will find all four of the ears, ears inside. Look at this picture. So all feel the cavity, all sides of the regular bone. So we talk about the shape of the bone, so we just look inside. Look inside, how many parts just form one ball? So look at this picture. So number one, we find on the surface it's very really hard. So that's what we call the bony substance. So the bony substance divides two kinds. Number one, it's very really harder. So that's what we call the compact substance. And two extremity is very really soft and inside very small cavity. That's what we call sponge substance. Sponge substance, cellular small cavity, contains the bone marrow. Number two, look at this picture. So the bone on our body just covered the fibrous tissue. So that's what we call the periosteum. So periosteum. We have two layers. Out layer is fibrous layer. Inner layer, that's the vesicular membrane. So vesicular membrane supports the blood supply and the nerve supply. So the periosteum, you know, the function is very important. It's for bone regeneration and repair. So we can think about it. If someone thinks he is not taller than I, than others, he is not taller than others. So he wants to be Come taller. How does the plastic surgery? Yes. We just according to the periosteum function. So we can do some surgery. Just uh, cut off the femoral bone, low part, or tibial bone, up part, and uh, push away. Then the bone, fle flexural bone, recover. So someone would be become taller than you. Of course, it's dangerous. The last one, the one bone inside, we contain the bone marrow. So look at this picture. On the mandibular cavity, on the chunk of the long bone. So in adult, that we call the yellow bone marrow, full of the fat tissue. Sometimes he have no ability to produce the blood cell anymore. Then. On the sponge bony substance, so look at this picture, we can find the red bone marrow, so it can produce the blood. So for the children, so the red bone marrow fall of the whole bone to produce blood cells. But the old man, 
only spongebony substance contains red bone marrow can produce blood. Chemical physical property of the bomb. So we have uh, two material: organic material and inorganic material. Organic material is about 30% of the one bone. The child organic material is more than inorganic material. So their bone is not fragile. So it's not easy broken. So we can see some child always fall on the ground. Then he get up, run away, nothing happened. But another part is the inorganic material, the all chemical material. For the man, inorganic material is more than organic material. So we always see someone, all the man, fall on the ground, and we will find the bone broken. Okay, so we just talk about the general introduction of the ball. Then next we will introduction the joint. Two bones they get together form the joint. So see you next week. Thank you.